Okay, this is part two of implementing the binary tree uh, class for um, C Sharp. So here we have our tree um, class, and so we need to begin to fill in some of these uh, functions. So let's go ahead and look at a non-recursive version of add. So this would be called to add a value to our tree. If you remember, the way that you add to a binary tree is you effectively search through the tree to find the proper uh, location for the new node to be implemented. And the rules are, if the current node, uh, if the value being added is less than the value of the current node, it gets added to the left. If it is greater than or equal to the value of the current node, you move right. And you keep doing this until you find a null value uh, either left or right where you're supposed to be going, in which case you know you've arrived at the proper spot on the tree. So here we are in our add function, and uh, since this is for our, our um, tree, when we first come into add, we will, be, we will be beginning with the top. So we'll begin at the top and work our way down. So the very first test we want to see is if the top is equal to null. If that's true, then we know that the tree is empty. And if the tree is empty, then we should immediately uh, add the item as the base node here. Um, so we need a new node. Uh, there's nothing, there's no place to store this item. So we need to go ahead and create the new node. So I'm going to say uh, node, and we'll call it new node, and we'll make a new one of it, and we'll use the constructor that is expecting an initial value. So here's the value I'm adding. This is the parameter from above here. So I'm getting that from the call itself. And so there I've created a brand new node, and since I want this to be attached to the top of the tree, I'm going to ahead and assign top equal to that new node. Uh, now, the classes, the top pointer, if you want to call it that, the top reference variable that's stored in my tree will now point to this new node. And since I'm done, I don't want to do anything more with the node. I've already attached it. I want to go ahead and return from the add function so that the, it will stop executing anything further. So if the top is null, if it's blank, go ahead and add a new node. That's one condition. If the tree is not empty, then we need to begin traversing the tree. So we are going to need a few items. We're going to need a current node pointer that's going to work its way down as to which node we're currently on. And we're going to need a Boolean value to determine whether or not we added the, the node and whether we should stop. Uh, that Boolean value would not be needed if we were doing a recursive implementation. But since we're doing a looped implementation, we need to figure out a way to exit our loop. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, uh, a node pointer. So we'll call it current node. And it, it's going to equal, um, well, let me see here. Hold on a second. It's going to initially equal the top because we want to stop start on our very top of our um, tree. So then we'll also have a bool and we'll call it added and it will initially be equal to false. This was the item I'll use to end my loop. And so now I want to do a loop. I, I want to just continue to uh, work my way down through the tree uh, until um, as long as I haven't added anything. So while I have not not added. So continue that as long as added has not been equal to true. And so inside here, I traverse the loop, traverse the tree, looking for where I want to put it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in some code from how I already have this done over here. And that way I can get it all done without having to spend all my time uh, typing. So here's my do loop. And we'll walk through what's happening inside of here. If the value is less than the current node, so current node dot value is the the value stored in the uh, node that we're 
we're currently looking at. So in this case, first time into the loop, it would be called it would be top. So you look at the value you're adding, you're comparing it to the value at the top, and if it's less than, I'm going to go left. If it's greater than or equal to, which you see down here, then I'm going to go right. And so now I have to check, is the path left from where I currently am null? If it is, then I know that that item should belong right there in the tree. So I want to go ahead and add that item. So I do the same thing I did when I added the top. I create a new node, giving it the value I'm currently storing, and I set current node dot left. That's the pointer from the left part of the node I'm currently on to point to that new node. Just like we did top before, this time we're doing new node. And then we set added equals true so that this loop will exit at the bottom. If current node not dot left is not null, then we we can go ahead and we can actually move left. So we increment our current node pointer. Current node is now equal to current node dot left. Next time into the loop, we will now be have moved down one in our tree. Same exact thing works on the right hand side. You'll see that the structure here is very parallel to what was happening on the right. Should I go right? Yes. If I want to go right but it's null then I should add the item to that part of the branch otherwise if it's not null then I can go right so I should go right and then this loop will continue to operate until I have successfully found the place where it should be added and the added boolean value becomes true in which case the loop ends and the item has been successfully added to the um, to the tree that is a non recursive version of add. So now let's go ahead and come down here to build the recursive version of add. And once again, I have that code already written over here, which I'm going to grab and pull in. So here's my non-recursive version, or here's my recursive version of add. Now, you will notice one of the advantages of the recursive implementation is it's significantly shorter because a lot of the looping structure is being handled by the recursion. So here we come in, we're going to pass it a node that we currently want to uh, begin searching with. So the very first call to add recursion here should pass it the top value. That's why we needed this public uh, add RC method it's going to initiate the recursion by passing it top. You'll notice we're doing reference variables. We're passing by reference so that the, the function call itself can modify the value. That's so that when you add a new node, you can add the attachment to the previous version's left or right pointer. So if the current node is null, so if I've passed in like a n dot left that's no null or an n dot right that's the condition for the node not existing and we add it so we go ahead and create the new node with the value like we did last time and we set n which here is a reference variable so it's it's the actual copy to the previous call that reference variable that pointer if you want to think of it that way is going to then take on the value or point to this new node and then I'm done. I've added it successfully, so I should return. This return will then fall back to the previous call if I've been uh, in here recursively. Otherwise, I check, is the value less than n dot value? If, 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 if it is, then I should recurse to the left. The nice thing here is I don't have to worry whether or not this is null or not like it did in the loop version. I just go ahead and recurse left. If it happens to be null, the next call to this routine will handle that and do the adding. If the value should go right, I could just go ahead and I recurse right. When it successfully adds one, it'll fall back to this function from the recursive call, which it will just return and end, and you'll just have a big sequence of returns up the recursion tree to exit the, the function. So as a result, the looping will sort of unfold itself under this 
uh, recursive method. So that it implements a recursive version of add. Okay, let's go ahead and implement the recursive version of print. And so here I have the code already written out. We're going to pop it in our recursive function of print. Now here what I'm using is a reference string to uh, build up the um, the string. So this is going to effectively become my output string here. And uh, let's see what I... Whoops, I originally called it S in my other version, so we'll fix that real quick. So I'm using S to build up the output string. Uh, I'm passing it by reference so that each time I recurse in lower and lower, I still am working on my original copy of my string and not recreating it every time I make a recursive call. Uh, here, node is going to be the node that should be called. Uh, I should probably implement this the same way I did before, which is the public version of print should actually call a recursive function inside to initialize the top and always start with the top. But here I do that a little bit differently. I go ahead and check to see if n is null, and if it is, go ahead and assume n is equal to the top. Probably not as good as my other method. Uh, if n dot left is not null, then go ahead and print out the value. Or if it is null, if it's not null, print out the value and then go left. This is the rule for traversing a tree. Otherwise, print out the value and then check to go right. Uh, if you look up how to traverse and print a sorted uh, uh, binary tree, you'll know that there are a series of rules where whenever you return from going left, you print out and then you go right. And this will get your, uh, your binary tree sorted in ascending order. So there's our implementation of our tree class and our node class. So all we have to do is actually implement the, um, the calls for our program. So as an example here, I have a little uh, Windows form generated here where we'll type in a number of how many we want. It'll print out our list and then our sorted list to see that this thing is actually operating. So I'm going to go ahead and copy in that code here real quick. So here I've copied in my button click event and uh, I'm going to use random numbers so this part is all about random number generation. Uh, effectively here I create my tree with my initial number and then I loop through n times to generate n items from the user input and each time I call one of my add routines. So in this case I'm calling the recursive add routine and it'll go ahead and add it to the array and then when I'm done I print out my array so that I get it in this tree string. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that runs. So if I want to generate 10 numbers, here's my 10 random numbers. Those have been added to the tree, and here's the output of the tree, and you'll notice that it's in an ascending order. So hopefully that's an example that you can use to see how you implement some uh, classes in C-sharp, and specifically how you create the dynamic data structure of a binary tree. You can extend this to include other methods for a tree uh, that you might want to Im implement, like search or, um, or deletion, etc. Hope that gives you a good start.